two f we have five t squared equals forty five um, we've got to solve by factoring so we'll just go ahead and solve by factoring like we've been doing there's actually another way to solve this and I'll show you the other way at the at the end it's using square roots we'll, sh we'll do that afterwards just to, to prove it but to solve by factoring we either simplify the thing or get zero on one side but either way we've got to get zero on one side how would we get zero on one side here subtract 45 right from both sides we do that we get 5t squared minus 45 is equal to 0 right so we got 0 on one side what's step 2 step 2 factorize we've got to factorize how do you factorize 5t squared minus 45 is there the greatest common factor always try and pull out a greatest common factor if you can is 5 a greatest common factor 5 times what gives 5t squared? t squared, right? 5 times what gives negative 45? 5 times negative 9. And that's equal to 0, right? <coughs> Are we done factoring? Are we finished factorizing? When you see the word factorize, it, it actually means keep going, keep going, keep going until you can't go any further. Can we factorize t squared minus 9 any further? This is a, there's a squared here and there's a subtract sign. Does that remind you of anything? So remember the difference of squares? How do you factor where the difference of squares? If you have a squared minus b squared, it's actually equal to a plus b times a minus b, right? So this is in fact t squared minus, now what number squared gives 9? 3 squared, right? So the t squared minus 9 is t squared minus 3 squared, which with the difference of squares is t plus 3 times t minus 3, okay? Now the greatest common factor of 5 stays there, it doesn't go away, and that's equal to 0, right? So we have, fact have we factorized this completely? Yes, we've pulled out the 5 we factorize t squared minus 9 now we have this okay and now we can use our trick if a times b is 0 then a is 0 or b is 0 right people get all confused about the 5 here why you're just saying look this times this times this is 0 one of these things has to be 0 is this is 5 ever going to be 0 it's not so you don't have to worry about it but this might be 0 or this thing might be zero, right? So just ignore the five. But I'm just saying, like, if if the t plus if this thing here is zero, then this whole thing will equal zero. If this thing here is zero, then it'll all equal zero. Five is never going to be zero, so you don't have to even use that. So we have either t plus three is zero or t minus three is zero, right? And we can solve each equation to get the answer. So solve each of these. What do you get? subtract 3 and we get t equals negative 3 right add 3 and we get t equals positive 3 right so we have two solutions t equals negative 3 or t equals positive 3 and that's solving by factoring which is what we were asked to do okay there's another way of solving this and I'll show you that now so we could have solved using square a square root so we had 5t squared equals 45 we could have divided both sides by 5 and that would give what? t squared equals what's 45 over 5? 9, right? then to get t in its own we have to undo the squared how do you undo a square? you take a square root that's the inverse operation square root right? But if you do square root of one side, you got to do square root of the other side. The only problem is, when you do square root of both sides, you got to remember your plus or minus. So root of t squared is t, and that's equal to plus or minus root 9. What's root 9? The number 3. Okay. So t equals plus or minus 3, which it means actually t equals plus 3, or t equals negative 3. And that's what we found with solving by, by the factory. Remember, we got positive or negative 3, right?